Hi, and good morning. Welcome back to another homegrown lecture series. Uh, we are starting off our last quarter today with uh, Paul Winsky. He's going to be creating a combination planter before your eyes. Uh, after that, uh, the next uh, talk will be Sausage Making 101. Uh, the beginning of, of November will be Citrus Trees for Your Landscape, which should uh, coincide nicely with our Master Gardener fruit tree sale. Uh, then rainwater harvesting, so you want to be a rancher, and then making holiday plants last. Uh, as a reminder, we have a, a podcast. We just dropped our, I believe, our fifth one. Um, so welcome to that. And then uh, I'm going to show you about an, another series that we have. This is our late lifescaping series. We are in the middle of it right now. There are three left. This is basically a combination of our different departments within our office here at Harris County. So uh, Brain Games for Mental Acuity is our next one. There is no cost for that. Uh, that still says herbarium inspired art, but basically that's art from the garden. And then the fall combination planter workshop. These are in person and you are intended to take things home with you. So you will be leaving with a combination planner. You will be leaving with artwork. And then with the brain games, I know there are some um, books and some things that you're going to go home with that. Um, so go ahead and sign up for those now. And uh, as for today, we're going to go ahead and get started with Paul Winsky. So let me bring him up here for you. And here is Paul Winsky. He can go ahead and get started with a combination. Hello there, tips. Harris County, and welcome to our homegrown program today. Uh, we are doing something a little bit different. We found a little bit more technology, and so we um, are turning it into more of a demonstration this week. So um, by all means, let us know what you think about it, either in the chat box uh, or in the survey as we are moving along. Uh, hopefully, we won't have any technical difficulties. Uh, this is something new. We've done some uh, uh, practice runs with it, and I think overall uh, we hope that you uh, enjoy it. Uh, let me just double check. Are we good? Uh, yeah, when you go live, it records automatically. OK, so great. So we are up and running uh, again. It, this is something new. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about how to create that combination planter. Um, it could be as simple as uh, a monopot with, with say something like uh, all um, pansies in it, or what we normally see are, are these combinations. And so uh, I made some combinations. I did these back in um, right around Labor Day. Uh, so you can see in this one here, um, I've got three different colors of uh, coleus. Uh, so these sort of give me my wow factor, my, my colors. Uh, I picked them for the fall, and then I've got some lantana coming through. Um, so this is, uh, and, and as you can see, the pot matches quite nicely with it. Um, so that's about a, a month after uh, growth. Um, started with three and a half inch pots, and you can see how it fills out. This one on this side, um, this is something different. This is just all herbs. Uh, so you can see how the pot color uh, sort of complements this one. And so we've got some basil here. Uh, we've got some sage on this side. We've got some variegation. We've got some purple uh, foliage with it. Um, and we've got a mint here. And you can see how that mint is uh, cascading off the side. Uh, so it, it softens the line of the pot. And then in, you know, poking out through here, we've got some chives. So um, there's just a lot of different things, a lot of ways that you can develop these uh, pots as you move along. Uh, this one larger one back here, uh, you can see my 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 look here is, uh, you know, we've got this penicetum, um, which is going to give it some height, some texture. We've got some uh, petunias in here, adding some color. Uh, and then we've got some ornamental kale. Um, and you can see how these colors work nicely um, with that gray pot. So you can be as creative as you want. 
um, with these combination planters. Um, you want to remember about the scale, the size of the pot. You don't want the pot, you know, you don't want to have too large a plants for the size of the pot because uh, over time uh, they'll get top heavy and they'll be falling over on you. Uh, so that's one of the things you want to think about. Uh, and then you want to make sure you have the right size container um, for the plants that you're working with. Um, normally, we in this one, there's uh, uh, we've got the three coleus and then we've got uh, three lantana. And so usually you want to have a nice combination, a nice accent um, with the plants and how they work together. So let's go over some of the basics that we uh, that you need in order to be successful uh, with these combination pots. Um, the first thing is you need the container. All right. And these containers can be. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, and, and really, it, it, it's up to your imagination as to what you want to use, um, what works well with your decor, whether it's on the patio, uh, at the entrance of your, your house. Um, we've got the, the typical terracotta uh, clay pots. This bowl would be nice if you were just sort of doing a uh, monochromatic or if we were just planting these uh, pansies in there. Um, these work really well. The nice thing I like about uh, the clay is, uh, or the terracotta is, um, you know, it, you get a much even drying of the soil uh, once the plant is in there. Uh, so um, uh, you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of when you're, uh, the type of pot you're working with, um, how it's gonna affect the soil draining out. Um, this one is glazed. Um, and so it's it's not going to dry out as quickly. Um, these are a lot heavier also. So um, be aware once you start filling it with soil, when you water it, it's going to get heavy. So, you know, some of these larger ones, I have two large by the front side of my house. Um, they just stay there. I don't move them. I water them. I plant them, pull them out at the end of the season, put something new in, and we just go that way. Uh, this one is a, uh, a fiber one. Um, it's like a compressed fiber. Um, the main thing with all of these, make sure there's holes in the bottom. Uh, you can see right in here, we've got a nice hole in here, so we know we're going to have drainage. Uh, if you've got plastic pots, you can always drill extra holes. So this is a plastic one, uh, sort of has that look. It's, it's got a nice, uh, uh, some decor on the outside, but you can always drill these holes as big as you want. Um, you want to make sure you've got good drainage holes in there uh, so these um, uh, containers won't turn into bog plants for you. So your containers are um, just like plants now. You've got just about every color, uh, every size, every texture that you can work with. Um, one thing that um, some people will do is they'll take the same type of container, um, the same color, and buy it in different sizes and group their plants together that way. Uh, and that's another way of achieving your goal uh, with your combination uh, planters. So we talked about uh, containers. The next thing we want to talk about is the soil. And with the soil, you want to have a good, good quality soil, um, one that's nice and loose and airy. Uh, you can see this one here. Um, it's got uh, some perlite in it. Uh, it's a peat base, so it's nice and light. I know it's going to drain well, uh, and that is definitely uh, a key. You don't want to just go out into your garden and dig up some of the soil in your garden and use it for your container, um, especially with our clay soils here. Uh, you will definitely have some problems with it. You'll have some issues. So again, um, make sure that you invest um, uh, in a good potting mix uh, this one, I, 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 I've used it on a regular basis. I've never had any issues with it. Uh, the other thing I like is it comes with, um, it's pre-charged with a little bit of fertilizer. Uh, so it's great for once those plants get started. Um, th there's a little charge in there. But you can see how nice and airy this is. Um, very easy to work with uh, and, and a just an overall good quality um, soil. Now there are recipes out there uh, if you want to use your own garden soil it's i think it's usually like a third of of your own soil 
maybe a third of peat moss, and then a third of either perlite or vermiculite. But, um, you know, if you can go in and, and buy a quality mix, and there's a lot of good quality mixes out there, by all means, I would recommend um, that route um, because you're going to be much more successful um, with your combinations, with your planters, and, and the plants are going to love them. You're going to get much better root systems. So as you can see these here, um, when you fill that plant uh, or, or that pot and the, the plants in there, um, I always like to, to, to leave a, a, about a half an inch or you know maybe thumbs, thumbs length um, opening. Um, in the greenhouse industry, we used to call it, we called it freeboard. Um, the thing that's nice about it is when you water it, you can fill it with water and let that water drain through. So in all these pots, there's always, there's at least a half inch uh, opening in all of these in order to fill it, let it drain through. Uh, because, you know, over time, especially in the heat of the summer, um, you know, depending on where that plant is, these are going to dry out quicker. All right. If you've got the terracotta pot is going to dry out much faster than say, you know, this plastic pot here, um, just because of the air and the moisture that will move through um, that porous pot. Um, we've talked about soil. Let's talk about the plants. Plants, you can use just about anything you want. Um, whatever your imagination is, uh, your plants, you can use those plants. Um, so, you know, we talk about, you know, the rule of thumb is we hear about, we talk about the thriller, the filler, the spiller. Uh, and really, that's a good, great place to start, but don't be limited to that. Um, you know, this one is a prime example of, you know, this is what I would consider to be my th uh, thriller. This is, it catches your eye, it adds a nice texture, it adds some height, it will get taller over the season. Uh, and then we've got our fillers here with regard to the uh, ornamental kale, the ornament, ornamental cabbage. And then my fillers and, and spillers will be my uh, petunias. In this one, uh, I sort of have uh, the coleus is working as my thrillers and my fillers. Um, the colors are, are those great fall colors, so it grabs your attention. And then poking out through, um, you know, I've got accent colors of the lantana. So that's my um, spillers. So again, you know, the, the rule of thumb, you know, the thriller, filler, and spiller is great when you're getting started. Um, the other thing is on this one is it's it's really, I, I just went with different colors and textures uh, of those greens. So, you know, in here, this is sort of my thriller. It's, it's the tallest one, but as you know, as you would come through and, and if you had to harvest some basil, um, you know, we're going to be able to, to, to take this plant down a little bit. Uh, it fills out some more. I can really smell this um, basil as I'm touching it. And then, you know, the sage and the uh, mint, as we harvest those too, they'll just continue to uh, grow uh, and fill in. So um, again, imagination, whatever you want to try, and don't be afraid to try anything. Um, they, I've seen them now where they'll have a woody plant as that sort of that anchor or that thriller. Uh, and then they can just change out the plants um, seasonally. And it makes it, uh, you can have interest throughout the entire season uh, with those combination planters. Um, let's talk about watering. Another um, very important key to this. Um, and, and I think what a lot of people do, especially as these plants start to get bigger and thicker, is um, they're not watering deep out down into that plant. They're coming overhead, watering, they're wetting the foliage, um, but they're really not getting um, the, um, that soil volume wet enough. Uh, and so uh, you want to make sure you get your hose down in there, you're filling it up, let it drain through, fill it up, let it drain through again. Uh, and again, it's going to depend on the time of year. In the heat of the summer, you're probably watering these maybe every day, every other day. Um, this time of year, as we cool down, as the season, uh, you know, day length is getting shorter, night temperatures are getting cooler, you're not going to have to water them as often. So it's very important to make sure um, that you're watering them properly, um, that those root systems are getting nice and wet. Um, so we don't want to overwater and we don't want to underwater. 
Uh, we just want to find that Goldilocks, you know, just right uh, is what we are looking for. Uh, and that's a key uh, to having a, uh, a successful combination planner. Maintenance overall with these, you know, you're going to have to come through and, uh, you know, clean them up. There, there may be some, you know, dead foliage. You want to get that out of there. Uh, you know, we, we've got some in through here. These have to be cleaned up. Um, do you need to fertilize them on a regular basis? And uh, the answer is yes, just like any other plant. Um, whether you can, you got one of two things. You can put in a, uh, a time release uh, fertilizer incorporated into the, uh, the top layer of the uh, mix, uh, and that will break down over time. Uh, if you like liquid fertilizers, you can uh, water them with a liquid fertilizer and give them the nutrients that, that you need. Whether it is um, organic or, uh, you know, the conventional types, it, what, it doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. And, you know, just always be aware that the plants will let you know when they're hungry. Uh, you know, you'll see some off color or you'll see uh, a lack of shoot production or things like that. So, you know, just sort of be aware as to um, what the plant needs, just like you're, if you were taking care of plants in your landscape, you know, this is sort of your mini landscape. Um, again, the great combination is um, they work um, in small areas. Uh, so say whether it's the patio or say you've got you're living in an apartment, uh, you've got a small patio, you can turn around and put together a, a combination planner um, that will work for you. Um, the other thing is on the maintenance side is make sure um, as you design or put this together, um, be aware of where that planter is going to go. Is it on the south side where you've got a lot of sun? Uh, or is it on the north side um, where it's it's not going to get a lot of direct sun? Is it morning sun, afternoon sun, especially in the heat of the summer? Afternoon sun, you know, temperatures are higher. It's going to be a lot hotter. So um, just take this all into account as you uh, are, are thinking about and, and putting these together. And really, there is no um, sort of wrong answer with these. Um, I always say just get get out there and do it. Uh, get your hands dirty, give it a shot, uh, and you're going to learn something from it each time you do it and you'll get better. Okay, so let's see. We talked about how to design. We've talked about the soil. We've talked about the planting. Uh, we've talked about the, the use of containers, um, watering properly, maintenance, fertilizer, things like that. So let's go ahead and um, plant one together. All right, and we've got a special... I guess deal for you this year or for this program. Um, so if you uh, when you get your survey um, at the end of that survey, there is going to be a question. Do would you like to be uh, included in the drawing for uh, this combination planner? And so if you put your name and email address in there, um, not this Monday, but the Monday after. So that would be the 18th, I believe. Um, we will pick the winner. Um, we will email you and um, you can come and pick up this combination. So um, um, first of all, we want to thank you for joining us with that. Um, but we just thought it would be kind of fun to, um, you know, give something away. We've been doing this for about a year and a half now. And so um, um, we're, we're, we're trying to change things up and, and keep people uh, uh, coming back. So uh, let's get started with this. So for my centerpiece um, or for my thriller, I am going to use something different. Um, and I, I went with this because I really liked the color on it. I like the texture of it. All right, so I am going to have a croton here. And you can see it's it's sort of got that nice fall color to it. Um, the one thing, look at the nice white roots on this. This this plant is in prime condition, uh, and that's what you want. Um, make sure you always look at your plants uh, when you're purchasing them. Do you see any disease? Do you see any spots? Do you see any insects on them? Um, this plant is in really good shape. Um, nice, healthy white roots. Uh, some circling, but uh, nothing major. I mean, you can still, there's still a lot of soil volume here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit. 
so we can get it established. I'm going to take some of the soil off the top here. Loosen that up. And then I am going to now that I like to put my um, my thriller or my focal piece, I guess, in the middle. Uh, and the reason why I like to do that. See if I can do this without making too much of a mess. Um, the reason why I like to do that is um, you never know where that plant or that pot's going to go. OK, um, so, you know, you may have uh, a if you have, say, a, a spot on it that doesn't look so great, you can always spin it uh, and, and have it uh, to the side that you want. So I'm going to put my thriller in the middle here. we got to get it. You know, we want to plant it right at the level um, that it originally was. We don't want it sitting up too high because if we sit it too high, um, it will act like a wick and it will dry out that root system. OK. So there we we've, we've got this just about right. I don't um, I don't press it down too much. Uh, when I fill this pot up, I fill I, I'll fill it pretty close to the top because I know once I water it, um, that water will bring it down. We'll get a little bit of compaction and that those air spaces will fill up and I'll be able to have that rim, that freeboard that I talked about uh, in place. All right, so I've got my main focus point in here so now i'm going to come in and um let's let's put in a uh, a purple pansy again nice healthy root systems and that's exactly what we are looking for i'm going to loosen them up just so we can uh and these are probably a little on the dry side we had them here in the office um but you know we'll get this watered once we get it in and the way I'm going to do this is I'm, I'm just going to go with uh, three of them here now. I'm going to alternate the colors so the colors will pick up or they'll either uh, complement or uh, they'll contrast with the colors of the the, uh, the croton. And the thing I like about the croton is, you know, it, it is a tropical plant. So, you know, if we if we get a frost, we may have to, you know, bring it inside or, or protect it a little bit. But, um, you know, I can use this as my, uh, or you can use this as your centerpiece or, you know, during the heat of the summer. Uh, and that plant's gonna do extremely well. So we're gonna get this uh, pansy in here. So we've got two pansies and I'm gonna go with, uh, you know what? We've got some good room here. I'm gonna put in another pansy on this side. So let me spin this around. I like working with the larger pots um, because it just gives you a lot more uh, freedom uh, with um, what you can do. You can fill, fill in a, you know, a few more plants uh, and get the color combinations that you want. Uh, again, as, as the, uh, once the cool weather goes down, you know, when, once it goes away, we can pop out the pansies uh, and then we can uh, you know, come in with something else for the spring. Um, whether it's petunias, whether you want to put vinca in there, whatever you like and, and whatever color combinations um, really, um, you know, sort of tickle your fancy. It, 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 there really isn't uh, any, like I said, any wrong, uh, wrong way of doing it. By all means, just get your hands in there and do it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a splash of this silver. We've got some Dusty Miller and the reason why I like it is um, it's going to show some contrast uh, to the pot. You know, we've got this black pot. And I think the uh, this uh, Dusty Miller, that silver on it will um, contrast nicely with the pot. It'll add, also add a little bit of height. Um, add some texture, you know, that fuzzy look to it is always a, uh, uh, a great thing to have. And they work well in our cool seasons here. And that's, you know, what this is going to be uh, ready for. So we'll get this planted in here. All right. We're looking pretty good. So I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, I think I can put the third one in here also. 
so again we're you know we're looking at the balance of this we're making sure our colors work well um, we've got some repetition with the color of the um, the dusty miller uh, the colors of the uh, you know using the pansies so over time you know when you first plant it does it look 100 percent the way you think it would uh, probably not but like anything else that you grow, you, you've got to be, um, uh, you know, patient with it because over time it will fill in and this, this is getting heavier. Now I am going to add maybe two of these in here. So this is just a variegated Asiatic Jasmine. And the reason why I like it, um, A, it, you know, we can leave it in the pot if we want for a long time, uh, since it is a, uh, you know, uh, a nice ground cover, um, but it's going to soften the lines of the pot. And the thing, the other thing I like about it is irrigation uh, against that black pot. Uh, it'll work really well um, and, and just give you a, a, a nice, nice look to it. Uh, you know, we don't always want to see the edges of the pot uh, unless it's got some uh, unique look to it, but we're going to get that in there. Plant that in right there next to, uh, and I think I'm going to put one other. Let me see if I should have room for at least one more. And then I think that is going to be it for this. So then the next uh, next step again, very good root systems, nice white, healthy, which is what you want. Um, by all means, when I, I always tell when I'm taught either whether I'm teaching master gardeners or, or whoever I'm talking to about plants um, and they're like, you know, how do I know if it's a good plant? I always tell them, hey, when you go into the store, you're the customer. Turn that plant over, knock it out of the pot and look at it. Uh, if it's got nice, white, healthy roots, then you're OK. If it's got root system that uh, is overly saturated, maybe has a like a moldy smell to it. Um, you, you might want to stay away from it. So actually, I think I'm going to put this one on this side. I've got some space in through here, so we're getting a little tight, but um, we will get it done. And we are going to finish that one in through here. The plants will bounce back. Don't worry about it. You can be a little rough with them, getting them in there. And then I will come through and add some uh, you know, additional soil here to get it where I, I want it to be. But you can see how these will, you know, just sort of drain them down. Uh, we've got our thriller here. Uh, we've got some nice colors. We've got some nice textures. So I think in the long run, you know, in a month from now, you know, these are a month old. In a month from now, we'll have some more new growth. We'll have these filling in. And I think uh, it'll be a, a, a great, looking um, fall plant um, that anybody would enjoy uh, either on their patio, uh, on their deck, uh, on their balcony, or uh, by their front door. So um, let me see, with that, um, Shannon, are there any questions? Are you seeing anything? Is Brandy able to uh, get everything taken care of? All right. Well, um, with that being said, um, I want to thank you all uh, for joining us today. Um, we hope you like this new format. Um, you know, it's something new for us. Uh, we like doing these type of demonstrations and at, at before we weren't sure as to how uh, we were going to be able to uh, sort of pull this off. Um, but now like anything else, the technology changes and we're changing with it. So just remember, if you want to register to win, to be the winner of this combination planner, make sure you fill out that survey. And the very last question, um, it's just your, your name and email address. And uh, we'll, we will take those, put them in a hat. Um, on the 18th, we will choose a winner uh, and you will be notified uh, via email if you were the winner. So. Um, by all means, I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this new format. I hope you enjoyed this program. I hope you have some great ideas now on how to put a combination planter together. Uh, and um, make sure you're back in two weeks because um, 
our a and r agent mr shannon Dietz, will be doing a similar demonstration on sausage making so um i am looking forward to that hopefully i'll be the cameraman so i can be able to smell that sausage as it's cooking up so uh again harris county thank you for joining us uh have a great day enjoy the weather and get out there and garden thank you <laughs>